There's a new monster in the waters of the Pacific, and it's taken the U.S. Navy by surprise. Not projected to enter service for some time yet, the U.S. Navy was surprised by the speed with which China is finishing construction on its latest nuclear-powered submarine, the Type 096. Known as a lackluster submarine power, the Type 96 will strengthen the submarine portion of the Chinese nuclear triad and be the first true modern offering, and it's got the U.S. military planners seriously concerned. Historically, China has not been a great submarine power, with the tech behind these stealthy machines being jealously guarded by every major power. This is the one piece of technology the Chinese weren't able to either steal from the US or the Soviets, or reverse engineer from purchased Soviet hulls. Lacking the maturity and expertise of Western shipbuilders, China's efforts to create a capable submarine fleet have been subpar. In the 1980s, China began development on the Type 93 nuclear-powered attack submarine as a replacement to their first-generation Type 91. The second generation of nuclear sub is now the most modern of China's submarine fleet, albeit with significant upgrades. Known as the Type 93A Shang-2 class, it's complemented by the Jin class Type 94A, which serves as China's nuclear deterrent, armed with 12 nuclear ballistic missiles. But these subs are built on old Soviet nuclear sub technology traded by the Russians in the early 1990s when they ran into significant cash troubles. Technical support and key design elements were provided by the Rubin Design Bureau for Marine Engineering, the Central Naval Agency of Russia. From this starting point, China built the Shang class, which featured modern improvements over the old Russian designs. In recent years, though, China's been building on lessons learned and incorporating new technologies to build a more competent and deadly submarine fleet. China is already deploying its newest conventional submarine, the Type 39C Yuan class, to Taiwan's territorial waters. This is an air-independent propulsion design, which utilizes diesel engines to charge banks of electronic batteries and then cruises under battery power. Diesel submarines are both incredibly lethal and incredibly vulnerable. They operate by electric power drawn from massive banks of batteries, typically giving them an endurance of days. Because there's no engine or nuclear reactor with moving parts operating while submerged, diesel subs are notoriously difficult to locate while running on electric power. However, when that charge runs low, diesel subs are forced to surface and extend snorkels so they can run a diesel engine and recharge their batteries without asphyxiating their crews. This is when a diesel sub turns from predator to helpless prey, as the extended snorkels become a dead giveaway to a surface radar. New snorkels feature radar-absorbing materials, but high-resolution radars can still spot them at long ranges, and sensors known as diesel sniffers can lead a warship directly to the location of a charging diesel submarine. Not to mention that while near the surface, any airborne anti-submarine assets will easily spot the big submarine. Air-independent propulsion technology aims to dramatically increase the endurance of vulnerable diesel submarines by allowing them to make full use of their extreme stealth. AIP comes in four varieties. The first is closed-cycle diesel engines. These types of boats store a supply of oxygen, typically in liquid form, aboard the submarine. This oxygen is then pumped to the engines, which it uses for combustion. However, in order for the engines to run safely, the oxygen is mixed with an inert gas like argon that simulates real atmospheric oxygen. The exhaust gas is then chilled and scrubbed to extract leftover oxygen and argon before the rest of the waste gas is simply discharged into the seawater. Despite it being the cheapest of AIP options and in service since 1960, the technology is not in wide use today due to the need of stored liquid oxygen on board. The highly reactive gas is extremely prone to starting fires, as the Soviets found out during the Cold War. Closed-cycle steam turbines are a second AIP alternative that improves on the core concept of closed-cycle technology. Operated only by the French, this method combusts ethanol and oxygen under high pressure to generate steam, which is in turn used to run a turbine a similar system to what we see in nuclear-powered submarines. The combustion occurs at such a high pressure that carbon dioxide can then be expelled directly into the sea at any depth without using a compressor. This AIP alternative has one huge advantage, a very high power output which means a very fast submarine outrunning even nuclear-powered boats. However, it's a very inefficient process which means oxygen consumption is extremely high. The system that powers this technology is also said to be extremely complex, which is not something you want to hear if your sub breaks down hundreds of miles from shore. Due to the high cost, low efficiency, and extreme complexity, global navies opt for the next two technologies instead. Stirling cycle engines are a closed cycle engine concept that has a working fluid, a substance such as the steam in nuclear-powered submarines which drives the shaft, permanently contained within the system itself. 
The working fluid is heated, which in turn moves the pistons and runs the submarine engine. A generator coupled to the engine provides electricity and recharges the onboard batteries. Typically, liquid oxygen is used as an oxidizer, and regular old diesel fuel is used to run the engine, with the exhaust scrubbed and released into the seawater. Compared with other AIP technologies, Stirling cycle engines are much cheaper and less complex, and run on regular old diesel making them cheap to refuel. They're also much quieter than closed cycle steam turbine engines, but a lot noisier than fuel cell diesel submarines. The submarine is also limited to a dive depth of 200 meters while the engine is engaged. Fuel cell AIP tech is the most popular and widely used today. Fuel cells convert chemical energy into electricity, typically by using a fuel and an oxidizer. Hydrogen, the fuel, is typically allowed to react with oxygen, with the chemical energy producing electricity, while water and heat are released as byproducts. Currently, Germany is the world leader in fuel cell technology and supplies most of the world's demand for AIP diesel submarines. However, France is working on a next-generation fuel cell diesel submarine, and India is looking to integrate the technology into its own subs. Fuel cells have almost no moving parts and thus allow for an incredible level of stealth. They can also achieve a fuel efficiency as high as 80%, giving their submarine great endurance. Hydrogen fuel cells also have the added bonus of creating no byproducts except for water and heat, making them environmentally friendly. The only major drawback to the technology is that they are very technologically complex and very expensive, limiting who can afford them. While details remain scarce, it's believed that China's Yuan class is using a Stirling engine, which has interesting implications as to how China plans to use this new attack submarine. America famously operates an all-nuclear submarine fleet, and that's because America seeks to hold every potential enemy at arm's length. This is key to the U.S. success throughout the 20th and 21st century. The ultimate goal is and always has been to ensure the homeland remains completely untouched in time of war. Diesel submarines have greatly limited range due to their need to carry fuel stores, while nuclear submarines are limited only by how much food you can pack on for the crew. Air-independent propulsion technology can greatly increase a diesel sub's range while removing its vulnerability as the sub no longer needs to snorkel, but it's still ultimately limited in range by the amount of fuel it can carry, and refueling your submarine halfway across the Pacific is going to be a dead giveaway to the enemy. Thus, the option to field a new diesel AIP submarine means that China's looking to address regional, not global concerns, namely Japanese, Australian, Taiwanese, and American forces in its own backyard in a potential struggle over Taiwan. Operating only a few hundred miles from friendly ports, AIP is an excellent choice for the Chinese Navy, coming in at a fraction of the price of a US nuclear submarine while enjoying the benefits of extreme stealth. Nuclear submarines may have unlimited endurance, but they're also notoriously noisy as the nuclear reactor is constantly operating and can never be shut down. This problem has forced the U.S. to spend billions on silencing technology, and today tracking a U.S. nuclear submarine has been described as it being easier to simply listen for silent spots in the ocean. Outside of crashed UFO technology and the true origin of Bigfoot, silencing technology for its nuclear fleet is one of the U.S.'s most closely guarded secrets. Cost matters in a war between the U.S. and China, because China knows that it has a considerable disadvantage in the undersea realm. A decade ago, Chinese submarines were described by sonar operators as sounding like the contents of a kitchen drawer bouncing around the bed of a truck going 40 miles per hour down a dirt road. Today, it's made leaps and bounds in silencing its notoriously noisy boats, prompting some U.S. admirals to comment on the improved capabilities observed by American patrols in the Pacific. But the U.S. is the old dog in the undersea game, even if it let its ASW capabilities seriously atrophy after the Cold War, leading to some embarrassing kills during exercises against friendly diesel subs in the early 2000s. Thus, China expects to lose a significant number of subs in a fight against the U.S. and its allies. And having a submarine that costs less than half of a U.S. nuclear-powered attack submarine becomes an incredibly attractive option, even if you're being forced to sacrifice the capability to project power globally. It's incredibly difficult to determine just how much of a threat the Yuan class is, though, given the extreme secrecy that shrouds any nation's attack submarines. What we do know we can infer from current developments, projected needs, and observations of the submarine itself. The sail, for example, has been redesigned from previous models, implying a greater need for surface or near-surface stealth. This could be because of very long transit times in and out of Chinese ports, or because the submarine will have a strong focus on the insertion of special forces troops. 
We also know that the aft casing has been extended to contain a towed sonar array, a typical feature of modern submarines that allows them to operate a sonar safely from a distance. Since enemy submarines are looking for the noise of your own sonar, towing it several hundred meters behind you is a safe way of using it actively while not getting yourself blown up. This capability has long been missing from Chinese submarines and makes the Yuan class a significantly more dangerous ASW opponent. The hull of the Yuan class also appears to be using a new type of anechoic coating, and it's missing the rubber tiles visible on earlier models on top of the hull. Rubber tiles are still used along the bottom of the boat though, and the new coating visible on the top does appear to be rubberized but slightly uneven. This could signify ongoing manufacturing troubles for China, which has lagged significantly behind the West in extreme precision manufacturing or advanced tooling machines such as the 5 or 7 axis tool machines. Similar lack of high precision can be seen on the J-20 stealth fighter, which has noticeable gaps in panels which increase its radar signature. The Yuan class is likely primarily an anti-ship platform, which makes sense for a conflict in the South Pacific. This differs from the US, which primarily uses its attack subs to hunt for other submarines, only then turning their weapons on surface targets. Weapon stowage is believed to number at around 18 and could include the latest YJ-18B supersonic anti-ship cruise missile, which would make the sub a significant threat to the US Navy surface vessels. However, whether it carries the YJ-18Bs or the older YJ-82 conventional anti-ship missiles, the Yuan will still need to link up with offboard assets to effectively target surface ships, rendering it vulnerable to kill chain disruption. On top of anti-ship missiles, the Yuan will carry standard dual-purpose anti-ship and anti-submarine torpedoes, but seems to also be equipped to conduct mining operations. This falls in line with the People's Liberation Army Navy's plan to create an anti-access area denial strategy that slows down US response in any war in the South Pacific. The Yuan class represents an evolving threat from China's underwater forces and a significant leap forward in submarine technology. By 2025, the DoD predicts that China's massive shipbuilding industry will have fielded 42 operational Yuans, which is bad news considering that this is exactly when many predict the US and China will be going to war. For the time being, it's widely believed that America's Virginia class remains the world's best attack submarine, but losses will be inevitable and the fate of the Pacific might be decided by who can afford to replenish their naval assets the fastest. Here, China has both the cost and production advantage, which should send alarm bells ringing at the Pentagon. Now go check out Russia and China versus NATO, or click this other video instead.